Hey, it's Electric Canuck. Welcome back to another video. This is an Emo Monta Pro, and it's an e-bike. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why an e-bike, or at least I think an e-bike, is the perfect companion to your Tesla or any other EV. And then what we're gonna do, if you're interested in e-bikes, I'm gonna take this for a ride, I'm gonna give it a bit of a review, and I'm gonna explain more about uh, why an e-bike is amazing. So if you're into e-bikes, this is the video for you. If you're not into e-bikes, catch me on the next Tesla video. Let's get started. Okay, why an e-bike? A lot of people out there might be thinking, well, an e-bike's for lazy people, but it's not really. Let's kind of poke at that a little bit. I think the benefit of an e-bike is it's very versatile. You can actually have three modes. One of the modes is just like a regular bike, so you're pedaling. The bike is heavier, so you're actually going to get a better workout. And a lot of people get an e-bike because of the versatility, because of the next two things that it can do. One is called pedal assist. And what that's gonna do is the electric motor is just going to assist you on your ride. And there's different levels of assist. This bike has levels one through five. And uh, you know, as you go up in that scale, the more assist that you get from the electric motor. A lot of people like that because let's say at the end of a workout, big hill, you know, that type of thing, uh, it just helps you kind of get up that hill. And let's face it, most of us are not training for the Tour de France or something like that. We're just out to have a good time. So pedal assist is a wonderful, just versatile thing that you can use to augment your day out biking. The third mode that I think is the ultimate versatility for the e-bike is the throttle only mode. And throttle only, just as it implies, you can press down on the throttle and you don't have to pedal at all. And why is that great? Well, it's great for a lot of people who maybe need assistance with mobility. So elderly people, people with injuries, uh, they can still get out there on the track or on the uh, trail, whatever you wanna call it, and they can still have a great day on the bike and get out there. I know what you must be thinking, hey, electric Canuck, you know, what does an e-bike cost and what do I get for those features? This right here is an Emo Monta Pro and with a 15 amp hour battery at 48 volts, it's gonna set you back 2,599 Canadian dollars, which is about 2,000 American dollars. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna make it perfectly clear that this is not a paid advertisement. I purchased this with my own money and I can 100% guarantee that the good folks at Emo have absolutely no idea who I am. Let's talk about the things that are gonna drive the cost of an e-bike. Probably the biggest thing that's gonna be the cost driver is going to be the size of the battery. Uh, that can add hundreds of dollars more to the cost of an e-bike. There are alternatives in the market if you don't want to purchase something that's gonna set you back $2,599 Canadian dollars or 2,000 American. Uh, you can get much cheaper e-bikes. You can get an e-bike from Walmart, for example. It's not gonna have the same level of quality as a you know, a brand like Emo, for example, but it's gonna be perfectly suitable for many people. So don't let the cost of an e-bike, this one in particular, uh, you know, dissuade you from thinking about getting an e-bike. And by the way, there's even a lot more expensive options in the marketplace. The other bike I was looking at was a Pedego, and it started at about 5,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, what's that, maybe about 3,200 or so American dollars. So they can really range in price. So you really wanna think about what kind of features do you want that are gonna make you happy. Uh, size of battery is gonna determine the amount of range that your bike is going to have. This one here with pedal assist, it's rated for about 80 kilometers in perfect conditions. So no wind and with you pedaling and the electric motor just providing some assess. If you go full throttle, uh, maybe you'll get 30 to 40 kilometers. I am going to do a range test in an upcoming video, but that's the kind of range you can expect from a 15 amp hour battery at 48 volts. Now, there's smaller battery capacities, larger battery capacities, so just think about what you want in your bike when you're kind of specking out. The other thing to be, I think, cautious about is what kind of components does the bike have? Um, I don't build bikes, you know, but I do know things like Shimano, for example, is a good brand. And the, the parts on here, the gears, all that kind of stuff, Shimano. Uh, so, you know, it's a recognizable brand name. I like to look for that kind of stuff. 
you know, I'm sure there's other components out there that are just as good, but I buy this as an investment for many years. And so high quality is very important to me. So again, it's going to be a mix of what do you want in your e-bike and how much do you want to spend? Let's go over the specific features of this bike. We're not going to go through all of them, just kind of some of the key features that you might be interested about. And just let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Happy to go over it in the comments. But the first thing I want to talk about is the battery here. So this battery, you can see here that there is a key lock. You put the key in and it just pops right off. And that's great because it allows you to then charge the battery you know, in your house or something like that. It's very convenient. The next feature that I really love about this bike are these mag wheels. And the mag wheels, not only do they look great, but they're actually quite functional because they are more rigid um, than your traditional spoke design. And, uh, you know, they're corrosive resistant. They're easy to maintain uh, more stability because of that rigidity. So I really love that feature. Then of course, one of the things that I always look for in a bike is going to be the disc brakes. And at this price point, uh, you would definitely expect to have disc brakes. Front shock absorption also too, something very important. I think if you're looking for a mountain bike, uh, they also have these with the fat tire versions, all that kind of stuff. And they also have ones that have a frame that are a step through, which are really great for that you know, elderly use case that I mentioned at the start of the video. And of course, you've got your disc brakes on the uh, front and the rear. So that's awesome. And this bike, what I like too, is it came with all of the things that you might want, like this, uh, you know, rack for the back. You know, it came included fender. There's also a fender for the front. I took that off because my bike carrier uh, is not compatible with the fender but it's very easy to take the fender off and put the fender back on. Um, and then I think the only other feature that I want to talk about here in this segment of the video is this display. This is an upgraded display and I'm not sure how readable it's going to be uh, here on the camera, but it is quite readable in bright sunlight and it's going to have your speedometer and a bunch of other features about your ride your battery level, any, everything that you would expect to have in terms of monitoring the state of your bike and the state of your ride. So that's pretty cool. As I mentioned, we have the Shimano uh, gears here, which is great. We've got the bell that comes included. There's literally nothing, there is nothing that wasn't included on this bike. So for that price, it's all in. And if you buy from a local store who's a dealer, then it's going to be assembled for you, which is also great. Otherwise you can buy online and get shipped to you and you can put it together yourself. Some people are into that, which is cool. But if you want just a walk away experience, so you're gonna buy the bike and it's all set up for you, uh, go check out one of your local stores. In this next segment, let's talk a little bit about what it is like to ride this thing. So right now, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but the setting is on zero. So this means that I am just pedaling this bike as if it were a normal bike without an electric motor. And uh, yeah, so it's great. You can get a workout, get your heart rate up, all that kind of stuff. And then, as I mentioned, there's five levels of assist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the first level of assist here. It'll change to a one on the screen. If you're able to see it, I don't know, but it's pretty sunny today. So the first level is going to assist you up to about 13, 14 kilometers an hour. I'll have to convert that when I do the video to uh, the Imperial system. And uh, the second one, let's go to the second one. So the second one's gonna help you out to the tune of about 19 kilometers an hour. And then the third one, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change gears here. Okay, so the third one's gonna help you out to 26 kilometers an hour. Let's hit four. We're at 29 kilometers an hour. And finally five, we're gonna be about 32 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna dial that back a little bit. Okay. <laughs> 
that never gets old actually. So speaking of 32 kilometers an hour, that's what this bike's, oh, I just got a freaking butterfly in the mouth. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> speaking of 32 kilometers an hour, <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this bike is governed to 32 kilometers per hour, but you can go into the settings and increase that, I think to 45 kilometers per hour. I'm quite good at 32 myself. It's uh, plenty fast for me. And uh, I think this is a great example of, you know, just like end of your bike outing and maybe you're going uphill home and you just got a little bit of assist on and, you know, it just makes it all that more enjoyable. You can do all that hard work and then uh, take it easy a little bit getting home. Okay, what else can I show you here? I'm gonna put it back to zero. So there's no pedal assist right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hit the throttle here, which is placed right by your thumb. And you don't have to pedal at all. So right now I am not pedaling. And if I max it out, so I'll go full throttle here, you'll see that we're gonna hit. Okay, well we actually hit 34. <laughs> uh, so I guess it's uh, a little loose with that uh, 32 kilometer an hour. <laughs> Um, you know, govern ship. Can I call it that? I don't know. Okay, so in terms of how the bike feels, when I'm in a zero, which is pedal only mode, the bike feels like a heavy mountain bike. Um, it rides like a heavy mountain bike. I'm not sure what else to say that's different, but there really isn't anything different. The way the battery is placed, the center of balance is quite good on this bike. Uh, rides nice, uh, you know, I, I trust it, it's predictable, everything that you would want your bike to be. One of the things that I didn't mention when I went over the specs for this bike, and I'm gonna put a link in the description so you go check out the full spikes, if you're, uh, spikes, check out the full specs if you're interested, uh, is that it's a 500 watt electric motor. And that's gonna be another thing that drives the cost, as I was mentioning before. So, you know, the more powerful the motor, the more you can expect to, pen, to spend. God, I can't speak. I've been out on the trail here. Um, <laughs> so I think the 500 watt motor option to me is a great balance between, you know, too little power and too much power. And uh, I'm quite happy with the 500 watt motor. All right, I'm heading back in the other direction. And we were just talking about the size of the motor and I was saying that 500 watt is uh, plenty powerful enough for me. So, um, you know, that's a great option. In terms of the battery size and range, I'm gonna do a full range test, but anecdotally, you know, I've put probably about 60 kilometers on this bike. I think with pedal assist, you can easily go 60 to 80 uh, kilometers based so far on my experience. And I'm gonna do a throttle only. Um, range tests. I think I can get between 30 and 40 with throttle only and that'll be really interesting because that is you know pretty good distance so if you work 15 kilometers um, away you know to get to work and back and not have to pedal uh, you could do it <laughs> with an e-bike you can do it. The last thing I'm going to mention about e-bikes is that depending where you live you may have to upgrade your helmet but I guess that's a good thing if it protects your noggin. Um, you can't really argue with that, can you? Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let me know in the comments if you wanna see more about e-bikes. Uh, I'd love to do more videos about them if there's interest. And as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, Electric Canuck, over now. out.